Let me meet two new people. That's Derek and Vicky. Vicky? Edmonds. Vicky Edmonds. Yes. But you can't help that. <laughs> are you married? Yes. Don't tell me any more than you have to. <laughs> to a man. Yes. And his name is Noel. No, John. John Edmonds. Edmonds. Thank heaven yes. for that. <laughs> have you any children? No, Gerald Edmonds. Sorry. Gerald <laughs> If the present Mr. Edmonds is out there, <laughs> let's, hope he's, let's hope he's looking in. Nice to see you. Where are you from, Doug? Um, South Wales. You're welcome. Thank you. And, uh, it's Thank always you. confusing and tense when you go up there. I'll tell you worry. what, if the Milton's called John, she'll be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, you have nothing you'd like to hide, have you, before we start? No, I don't think so. He's probably right. Derek. Harris. Harris, from where? Harrow. And what do you do, Derek? I can't see. I can't. You're welcome, Derek. You too, Vicky. We're ready to go. Who won the toss? Derek I did. A or B, Derek? But, uh, oh, good man. Um, a, please. A. Right, Vicky. And if you win something, you might be able to go home after all. <laughs> <laughs> Rolf Harris was Rolf. thrown out of his swimming class because while everyone else was howling their breath on the water, <laughs> Rolf was howling his blank. <laughs> 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 oh, I hope I get this right. <laughs> Everybody got that question? Thank you, gang. That's fine. Thank you, John. And Barbara. And naturally, Rolf. Okay, Vicky, it's you. Rolf Harris, thrown out of his swimming class because while everyone else was holding their breath underwater, he was holding his... Didgeridoo. His didgeridoo. Okay, he might have been. I would have thought didgeridoo or at least his wobble board. Rolf well, Harris. Well... I'm so thrilled because my, my mum and dad are from South Wales and I'm thrilled to be the first to be oh, a point great. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you do. That's how you spell it in your The red triangle, Vicky, just turn over oh, your first yeah. one there. That's a point. Barbara Kelly. I'm sorry, I didn't go along with that. It was just far too obvious and Vicky looked far too intelligent, so I put Wallaby, Wallaby. which is not even from Australia anyway, I don't think. <laughs> what do Canadians know? Right. Well, I think it's far too obvious and I'm far yes. too obvious. You I did, got did, it right. <laughs> Good start. I put what he puts, you know, and then I thought, well, it's got to be there, you know. Did you eat I was just, I've been throwing out a lot, you know. From Luke Nample. He was holding his didgeridoo. He was yeah. holding his didgeridoo there. Yeah. Yeah. You're the stubs, thank really? heaven I got you. It's a didgeridoo. Oh, five points. Five points to Vicky with didgeridoo. Derek, you've quite a bit to do here. Or didgeridoo. <laughs> 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 the oil shortage seems to be affecting us all. I read this week that John Travolta is having to put blank on his hair. <coughs> the oil shortage, Derek, seems to be affecting us all. I read this week that John Travolta is having to put blank on his hair. <laughs> Tommy King, Sunrise, he brings <laughs> on <laughs> Easy boy, easy, easy boy, easy, easy. Down, down boy, down boy, down. Have you seen him do that? Do you know that Rolf Harris is the only man that ever became a star through having asthma? <laughs> How do you mean? Stop! <laughs> 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 yours. <laughs> you thought I was John there for a minute, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of your world. <laughs> the oil shortage, Derek, seems to be affecting us all. I read this week that John Travolta's having to put on his hair. Grease. Grease. No, that's oil. Oh. oh. Wow. That's oil, Derek. Hey, don't start picking on the oh, poor contestants. I want to win. I'm embarrassed, Derek. Obviously, when you say grease, it immediately jumps to the head, the show and everything, and I yes. didn't get it. I'd butter. I'd put butter. Butter. But I think, sorry, Elsa. I think I might have said that, or indeed, uh, what I can see from you, sorry. margarine. I got, I, yeah, I got margarine. stupidly logical. Derek, I, you know, I think the old, old story, you're too clever for him. <laughs> no. Grease. You're not too it clever for this one. 
I thought I'd be terribly flash, you see, and put whale blubber. But then I thought <laughs> I'd put lard. She's not a well person, you She's know. Not. <laughs> I got it right. Oh, you would. Vaseline. Vaseline. Your windows <laughs> fell out. <didn't> you? <laughs> Tear mess. It's awfully nicely written. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's five to one. Derek, I'm going to give you first shot again, and this time John will not be playing with you. Hey, you have to get up hey. late, that's all. Hey. <laughs> You'll be free to play with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, I never know who you are. <laughs> holidays, I tried to get right away from Jimmy Young. <laughs> <laughs> There's no truth in the rumour that I went all the way to blank. <laughs> it's not that funny, missus. <laughs> now, you're not playing this time, John? I will, no, of course. For my holidays, I tried to get right away from Jimmy Young. But there's no truth in the rumour that I went all the way to blank. Some are easy, some are difficult. There's no way of knowing. That's quite a tricky little one, but you never know. Derek might come up with the answer that matches all the rest of you. Barbara's ready. You ready? Everybody ready? For my holidays, I tried to get right away from Jimmy Young, which you can understand. That bit, we understand. But there's no truth in the rumour that I went all the way to... Ireland? Ireland. I didn't know it. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. Yeah, well... You see, I... Yeah, yeah, I could be. Could be. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Derek. Hey. It's not an easy one. But Derek, on the other hand, right, Derek, you and I hand. are on the same. Guess way. what's going to happen? <laughs> okay, hold on. Please. Our three in the bottom row have got to get them all right and match up with you on all three, Derek. If you're going to be in this, <laughs> let's see. You've done it again. All oh, right, everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Well, it could have been that. Yes. It wasn't. Coventry. It could have been that. Yes. It wasn't. Yeah. Could have been that. Listen, do you think it those wasn't. things grow on trees? <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to have an economy drive here. <laughs> That's it, I'm afraid. I'm afraid that there's no way since, since Karen didn't oh, match that look Derek... Look at that, we both got, got it right as well. Invercocky leaky. <laughs> that's an island. And yes. Eunice Stubbs got yes. Ireland. And I bet you didn't think I'd get it right. I did. I, I, I've had faith in you from the very beginning. Oh, Yuna. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Vicky, come on, we'll play the Derek, that was a nasty. That was a nasty little one. You have our sympathies and, and precious little else. Unless, of course, you count that extremely, um, not intrinsically valuable, but with <laughs> sentimental value, blankety-blank, checkbook and pen, which you'll be getting within the next five years. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Vicky Edmonds, Pride of South Wales. It's the super match, Vicky. Let's have a look. You've got a match 150. It's blue blanks, blue blank, or blue blankety blanks. Who would you like to help you? Oh, dear. Um, Barbara Kelly, please. Barbara, blue... Uh, bluegrass. Bluegrass. But that's a, very that's a country one. expression. Uh, Lenny Bennett, please. Lenny Bennett. Blue... Danube. Danube. Eunice Stubbs. Please. Eunice Stubbs. Peter. Oh. Barbara says bluegrass. Lenny says blue Danube. Eunice says blue Peter. Now, what do you think? You may have a thought of your own. One of those. Um, blue Peter. Because blue Peter. Yes, I'd be inclined to do that too. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been wrong before too. Let's have a look then. Let's have a look at the 50 blanks. Blue skies. A hundred blanks. <laughs> Move. <laughs> 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 All right, 
Vicky yeah. can't look. All right, you turn your back on it, we see. For 150 blanks, I don't know what's up there any more than anybody else. Let's see. Blue. Peter. Blue. Yeah. I think whatever happens now, Vicky, you'll be able to go home to South Wales. You've kept the pride of the country going and probably your husband will let you in the back door. <laughs> That's a portable TV and a digital clock radio, but you may be able to double it up. You've got that anyway. Yeah. But since in the first round Anne had 150 blanks, yeah. we're going to have one of these tiebreakers to see who plays the head-to-head. -head. So let's roll the thing around. <laughs> Now, you know what happens in our tiebreaker? I shall read out this question. You write down the answer, girls, and they'll move amongst the hobbledehoys there. And as soon as we get an answer that corresponds with what one of you, or both, has written down, hands in the air. Okay? Mr. Guan will play the head to head. Some people have wall to wall carpeting. When I was a lad, we were so poor, we didn't even have wall to wall blank. Contestants write it down this time. Our star guests remain quiet and shrewd until I move amongst them like a great cat. <laughs> Vicky's ready, Anne is cogitating, and in that tradition of grand sportsmanship in which this whole game is played, they both turn the cards over so that the other can't see them. <laughs> it's grand, isn't it, to see that? Rolf, here we go. Some people have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. When I was a lad, we were so poor, we didn't even have wall-to-wall... -wall floors. Floors. <laughs> and before I take Vicky in my manly arms again, <laughs> can you tell me what you had? Wall-to-wall... -wall lino. Yeah. Vicky, come and join me, please. We'll do that to head. We'll commiserate with you, Anne, but not too much because you've got 150 blanks worth of portable TV and digital clock radio. You've been a splendid contestant. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Bye -bye. Is Vicky Edmonds from where in South Wales? Bridge End. Bridge End. They played rugby there? Yes. Not very well, though. Oh, very well, yes. In Bridge End, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I thought they always got last in the, in the Welsh club championships. Oh, I don't know about that, but they do play it well there. <laughs> they won it last year. <laughs> <laughs> Who can never go back to Bridge End again? <laughs> It's the head-to-head, -head. <coughs> and you've already got the portable TV and digital clock radio, but you can double up to a 50cc moped with accessories. <laughs> Ready to, you can drive it out of here as soon as you've got it. Right. I've already got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a hundred, please, hundred. Make it a hundred. How about another one? <laughs> <laughs> You'd love another one, yes. Shut up. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> love another one. Sell it to me. Vicky will love another one. Okay, all you have to do is double up. You do want to win it, don't oh, you? We'll yes. get you something oh, else if you don't like that. No, please. You, you're in enough trouble with Bridget <laughs> and your husband. And now the motorbike manufacturing association. <laughs> now, you've got to pick somebody before you turn your back on them. Uh, Rolf Harris, please. Rolf Harris, please. Okay. Ralph Harris, turn your back on him then. And Terrible responsibility. Now you just move a bit closer to me, Vicky, if you would. And I'll pull it out of my pocket and surprise you. Very <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you write it down. Now, you don't say a word, yet, Vicky, until Ralph is ready. He's got it written down. Rice blank. Rice blank. Ralph, no prompting now from the audience. Rice blank. Rice blank. Rice blank. Yep. Okay, Ralph's got it. Rice blank. Put in. Put in. Put in!
that means that you've doubled up the prize you really wanted. And... <laughs> CC moped with accessories ready to drive. Oh. And I wish you'd take it away. <laughs> and congratulations to Vicky from Bridge End. And, and a banana. And a banana. <laughs> and Ross and Barbara and John and Karen and Lenny and Una. And thank you for joining us. And I hope you'll make it another date for another blankety blank same time next week. Bye bye. <laughs> Of course, you'll be seeing them a bit later on, but right now, would you please say hello, as always on 3, 2, 1, to the most important people here, our contestants. From Colin Bay and Bridge End, we've got Gareth Jones and Vicky Edmonds. And from Bangor, County Down, we've got Sandra and Philip Hutton. From Formby Merseyside, please welcome Gerard Bird and Jan Murphy. Thank you. Well, as always, ladies and gentlemen, on 3, 2, 1, of course, we do start with our quiz. Now, remember, we always have two rounds of questioning. In the first round, our contestants play for £10 for each correct answer, which means if they scored a maximum of 10 at the end of the first round, they'd have £100. 10 at the end of the second, of course, would make sure they got 1,000. But whatever the amount is at the end of the first round, that's what they play for, for each correct answer in the second. Now, at the end of the quiz, the couple with the lowest amount of money leaves us at that point. The remaining two couples then play our brand new elimination game, which you'll be seeing in part two of the program, which will leave one couple to go through where all the big prizes are to be won. So, without any further ado, let's meet our first couple tonight. And we've got Gerard and Jan here. Oops, I've dropped your documents. Now, where are you from? Which part are you from? We're from Formby and Merseyside. Formby and Merseyside. I see, Jan. Lovely. And uh, what do you do for a living? Why don't you bother to work anymore? Oh, <laughs> yes, I have to. I'm manageress, <laughs> manageress of a travel agency. Really? Oh, that's, do you do many of these marvellous trips that everybody does? Oh, yes, yes. Well, we book a lot of trips, but we don't get the chance to go on them. Oh, I see. Have you been to any at all? I've been to the usual tourist spots, but not anywhere far afield. And what's the usual tourist spots? Uh, around Spain and Italy and Austria. Oh, the usual tourist spots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're in Barnsley, we think we're having a great weekend, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. And Gerald, of course, I see here you're a chartered quantity surveyor. Yeah. And you like football too. Who's your team? Everton. Everton, ah. Yeah. We always get a Liverpool supporter tonight <laughs> and Everton. There doing are pretty still well. some of us. There are still some. You're doing very well. <laughs> what do you think then, Gerald, about all this soccer violence that goes on? I mean, what do you really think about that? Oh, it's obviously it's disgraceful and very I mean, frightening when you're away. But... Were you upset like I was with the England supporters in Rome at the, the championships there? I mean, the way they ruined Rome. They even improved on the Colosseum. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't as bad as the Italians running around pinching the ice creams off the tourists on the canals. <laughs> <laughs> well, they? Hey. But let's have your first round questions. And here we've got Libby Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Yes. So this is my man, Tracy Yes, And you're the is... famous Ted Rogers. The famous, well... I wouldn't say that, Libby. Well, neither would I, but it's written up over there. Well, don't tell everybody. <laughs> would you like to select your first round questions, please? There we are. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Thanks, Libby. Now, of course, in the first round, you know you play for £10 for each correct answer. There are only two ways they can be stopped. That's if you give a wrong answer, in fact, if you make a mistake, or if, in fact, you run out of time. Now, if you do make a mistake, we have to stop you there. We can't continue. That's the end of that round for you, all right? But we also like you to answer alternately, and, of course, it's always latest first. And uh, if you do not know an answer, just say don't know. And of course, I'll go on to your partner with the next question because if you don't know, believe me, it's best to get it out of the way, try and build up your money, all right? We do let you have one to start with, by the way. 
This question is about singers in the world of pop music and their backing groups. We will give you the singer. We want you to give us the group most often associated with that group. All right? Fine. We'll let you have one to start with Paul McCartney and Wings. So we start you with Paul McCartney and... Wings. Bob Marley and the... Wailers. Jerry and the... Pacemakers. Gladys Knight and the... Pips. Bill Haley and his... Comets. Cliff Richard and the... Shadows. Brian Poole and the... Tremolos. Freddie and the... Dreamers. Kenny Ball and his... Jasmine. Shane Fenton and the... Fentones. Right, you've got a maximum. First round. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum. First round, that means they're playing for £100. Each correct answer next time. Well done. That's nice. OK. Now, here we've got Gareth and Vicky. Gareth Jones and Vicky Edmonds and your brother and sister. That's right, yes. Now, you come from Wales, but different parts. I see here that, with uh, Vicky, you live in Bridgend. Bridgend, South Wales. Yeah. Bridgend. That's the only Welsh name I can say. <laughs> now, I see. And what, uh, your housewife now, My yes? My housewife. That's and right. a mother, too? Yes, two uh, children, yes, a girl and, what, and a boy. And how old are they? Uh, Corrie is two and Richard is five months. Will they be looking tonight? The five month old, oh, he won't be, will he? No, I shouldn't. Well, give him a wave anyway. You never know, young <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Lovely. I see. But what did you do before, in fact, you started to become a full time mother? A police auxiliary. Police auxiliary? Mm. Really? What sort of job did, work did you do in that I, area? I answered 999s, nine, nine, etc. You know, 999 nine, nine calls? Yeah, yeah. I bet you got a few good ones there, didn't I you? I had a few very good ones there. Like a, <laughs> <laughs> I had a man ring me up uh, reporting sheep loose on the A48. Sheep on and the A48? He wouldn't give me his name, and when I finally got it out of him, he said his name was Mr. Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I believe it. <laughs> Said it's true. Sheep on the motorway. They couldn't do a U-turn, could they? That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> One good thing to cure sheep, sheep on the motorway. Put them into the motorway cafe. That cures anybody. I tell you. <laughs> now, Gareth, you're from which part of Wales? From uh, Colwyn Bay, North Wales. Colwyn is North Wales. Of course it is. That's right. And what sort of hobbies do you have? Hobbies? Well, I've got, um, well, I'm a rugby supporter. Of course. And <laughs> <laughs> I make uh, little quaint matchstick churches, actually. Really? Yeah, they're about uh, two inches tall. Uh -huh. I put a lot of detail into them. And I I'm the sure you do. And... People that do that kind of thing are very well into detail. You have to be to, get, <laughs> to make things that small. I think it's my... And I love that part of North Wales. I go there most often, most summers, in fact. I was there a few weeks ago. I was at my Welsh holiday home. I know what you're going to say, but I get on with my Welsh neighbours like a house on fire. Oh. <laughs> OK, let's get on with the questions. And now with the questions, we've got Fiona Curzon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there it is, you see? Now, Fiona, I must say, I've always had a thing about long blonde hair. Mm, I think that suits you rather better, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the Grecian? OK, we won't go into that. Would you, would you like to select your questions? No, no, no. <laughs> of course, that means that that envelope will be our third couple's questions. OK, now, good luck to you. You know you've got a maximum to beat, but oh, don't do. get nervous. Here we go, if I can get my pen out here. Same thing, we will let you have one to start with. Ten pounds each correct answer. Don't know an answer, say don't know. We go on to the next question. This is about pairs of names in the world of entertainment which are inseparable. We will give you the first and we want you to give us the second. Now, we'll let you have one to start with Morecambe and Wise. So it's Morecambe and... Wise. Starsky and... Hutch. Gilbert and... Sullivan. Flanagan and... Don't know. Laurel and... Hardy. Peters and... Lee. Simon and... Garfunkel. Cannon and... Ball. Nervo and... Don't know. Flanders and... Swan. Right, at the end of that ten there, I make that. You have just two wrong, so you should have 80 pounds. Oh! Yes, you <laughs> Still very good. <laughs> so that's what, 80 pounds next time. Each correct answer. And here we've got Sandra and we have Philip. And you come from where? Ah, yes. You tell us where you're from. Well, I'm from Bangor, Northern Ireland. Bangor, Northern Ireland. And where are you from, Philip? Well, uh, originally from Belfast, but we both live in Bangor. We're You're both in Bangor now. Yeah. Is that the Bangor? Where? <laughs> <laughs> is that the same Bangor? Or not, is that the Welsh? Not quite. That's the Welsh one. That's the Welsh one. Welsh one. <laughs> All right. I see. Nice to have the two of you here. Now, what's your job, Philip? What do you do? I'm a secondary school teacher in a boys' school in Belfast. Really? Yes. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> what 
are you doing when you're not marking your homework? What's your sort well, of hobbies? Well, I'm interested in music, uh, photography, and doing competitions like, you know, spot the ball, things like that. Really? Yes. I can never figure those spot the ball things. I'm always, mine's always in the crowd somewhere when I'm <laughs> always. Never mind, it's nice to have you two here, Sandra. And you, you also, what? You are a primary school teacher, is that right? Yes, that's right. I teach infants. Uh -huh. And what sort of interest do you have other than that? I know it's a full-time job. All the usual things like knitting, gardening, art. Art? Just things like that. Uh -huh. It says here, cooking as well. Do you like cooking much or do you like to keep that well away from everything else? Well, I keep it well away. Because <laughs> you haven't eaten here at the Yorkshire Canteen, have you? No. Yeah. Which is great stuff, you know, because the cook made an apple turnover today. She supplied the apple, my stomach did the rest. You should have tried that. Great. <laughs> oh, you've eaten there. I think good. Okay. <laughs> Let's have the questions, please. This time we have Alison, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alison, I can't quite get this last name of yours. It's quite a name. Alison, Alison. I'm Alison Temple Savage. Temple Savage. It's like a primitive religion, that, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Alison. Oh, really don't mean. worry, Edward. Everyone makes jokes about my name since I changed it. You changed it? Well, what was your name before you changed it, Alison? Wonderland. I believe that, yes. <laughs> OK, there's their question. That's for you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot, Alison. Right, so far you've got 100 to beat a maximum and 80, but we want a good luck to the two of you. Don't forget you'll have one to start. Don't know, don't know, I'll answer, carry on. This question is about quizzes and game shows seen regularly on television. We will give you the name of the show. We want you to give us the compare. Now, we'll start you with Sale of the Century and Nicholas Parsons. So, Sale of the Century and... Nicholas Parsons. Mr. and Mrs. Derek Beatty. Give us a clue. Don't know. Blankety blank. That's, uh, <laughs> Terry Wogan. Play your cards right. Um, Bruce Forsyth. Ask the family. Um, Robert Robertson. The Krypton Factor. I uh, don't know. Family Fortunes. Bob Monkhouse. University Challenge. I don't know. Ah, uh, we're out of time there. We've got nine questions, but in fact, I've got just two don't knows. The University Challenge was Bamba Gascoigne, and give us a clue, in fact, was Michael Aspel. So therefore, one, two, three, four, five, six. That should be 60 pounds, and it is. 60 pounds you've got. Well done. So. At the end of the first round, ladies and gentlemen, we have couple number three here on 60 pounds, couple number two are on 80, but in the lead at the moment, Jan and Ger Gerard right there, 100 pounds. Okay. The second round questions from Libby. Would you like to select them, please, Gerard and Jan? Thanks a lot, Libby. Right. Good luck to you once again. As I said to you, I keep impressing this upon you. If you don't know, carry on. You can build up the score. This question is about films which center on a sport or a physical activity. We will give you the name of the film. We want you to tell us the sport which is central to that film. Now, we'll start with Grand Prix. That's about motor racing. So Grand Prix is about... Motor racing. Rocky was about... Boxer. National Velvet is about... Horse racing. Silver Dream Racer is about... Motorcycle racing. Swallows and Amazons. Don't Swall know. You don't know. They shoot horses, don't they? Don't know. Breaking away. Don't know. International Velvet. Show jumping. The Red Shoes. Don't know. Downhill Racer. I, uh, skiing. Right, that's it. Okay, so therefore there were just one, two, three you didn't know. Swallows and Amazons was about sailing. Mm -hmm. They shoot horses, don't they? It was about dance marathons. Breaking Away was about cycling. Sorry, one more. The Red Shoes you didn't know. That was about ballet dancing. Mm -hmm. So there it is. You've got <laughs> 600 pounds. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Fiona. Okay, Gareth and Vicky, if you'd like no, to select your second round questions, <laughs> you're choosing them. Thank you very much. You're going for £80 for each correct answer. Now then, who's going through to part two tonight with the chance to take home a great prize? This question is about films which are set in one particular city. We will give you the name of the film. We want you to give us the city where most of its action takes place. Do you understand that? Yes. Right. One will start you with My Fair Lady, of course, most takes place in London, so it's My Fair Lady and... London. The Third Man. I don't know. French Connection 2. I don't know. Puppet on a Chain. I don't know. Cabaret. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Breakfast at Tiffany's. 
London. Uh, wrong, I'm afraid. Uh, Sorry, Gareth. Uh, in fact, that was New York. Breakfast at Tiffany's did take place in New York. The ones you didn't know was uh, Cabaret was in Berlin. Puppet on a chain was Amsterdam. French Connection 2 was Marseille. The third man was, in fact, Vienna. So we've only got the one we started you with. In fact, you still only have 80 pounds. Oh, it's so. all right. <laughs> Never mind, you've got 80 pounds. Okay, it's the last round for Philip and Sandra. Thanks a lot, Alison. And you are playing for £60. Sorry. And welcome back. Our second set of contestants are all ready to play a question of stars. They're sitting at the edge of their seats. Look at them. <laughs> Let's meet them. First of all, we have Vicky Edmonds. She was born in Tredega. She's a housewife, married and has three children. Vicky, some more about yourself, please. Well, I'm unstable. I'm... Uh, Pig-headed. Um, I like history, particularly um, um, Henry VIII, and I hate tight knicker elastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I <won't. laughs> There's no answer to that, so we'll move on to Kerry Griffiths. And he was born in Dursley in Gloucestershire, the birdman from Barry, where he runs the Welsh Hawking Centre. Kerry, describe yourself. Well, my friends say I'm lazy, I'm a bit pushy, uh, I certainly hate towns, and I'm absolutely born lucky. And again, my friends tell me if I fall in a barrel of the brown smelly stuff, I come up smelling of roses. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Next to Kerry is Stella King. Stella was born in Nantes de She's a cabaret singer. Stella, what are you like? I'm afraid to ask. Oh, kind of arty. Placid. Sentimental, like, you know. And, uh, sensitive. But I got a filthy temper. <laughs> And I could kill. <laughs> <laughs> Control it, please, won't you? Be kind to her, Fiona, will you? I, I will try. Actually, it sounds awfully like me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard so. Um, Nantigro, where is Nantigro? Sorry to show my ignorance. South Wales well, Valleys. South Wales, uh, oh, it's down in the South Wales. My father had a fast bike. Is it romantic? Can you tell me? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Yeah. There's plenty it's of the romance it's there, the though. You know, it's, it's romantic and it's... Yeah? Closer Bailey come from there, look. <laughs> that's not very romantic, but we won't go into that. <laughs> no, that's told me nothing. No. No, I mean, you can't be Torian just because you come from Nancy Glow. Well, if it would have been romantic, she might have. Valley of Coal, what about you, Henry? Well, I'd like to ask Kerry, um, you say you always come up smelling of roses. Well, that's a good Torian sign, because um, I like to smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we noticed. We noticed. <laughs> no more. <laughs> All right, no more. <laughs> and he does. I can assure <laughs> you. And what's this, Vicky? You hate tight nick elastic. Yes, I do. What do you have to do then? Snip it each time when you get a new pair? <laughs> I get a problem there. You see, sometimes you know they fall down. <laughs> oh. I like a real. <laughs> <laughs> more than their nick as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not deliberate. <laughs> oh, I see. Right. <laughs> Russell, raise well, the level a little, please. Well, I'll try to, but with this lot out, I've got not much hope. Anyway, um, Vicky, you're unstable, so why are you on here? Because you'll be a nervous wreck when you go. Um, you're unstable in what way? What makes you unstable? Um, well, I, I don't know, really. I, I worry a lot. Uh, I do things, and then I then I worry a lot about them. Like, I go home and worry about what I said on you tonight. <laughs> oh, no, you've got a long time. Yes, well, anyway, let's go on to Stella, then. You say you could kill... Now, Stella, how do you kill? Is it with a knife, with it with an axe, or is it when you oh, open your mouth and sing? My lovely boy, anybody. With your body? No, anybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> with my body as well, mate. Yes, I thought you might. I think you're supposed to raise the tone. Oh. Well, I want a few belly laughs. It looks yeah. like Stella and I have got a head on that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kerry, you always smell of roses when you fall into the OK sauce. Um, <laughs> so... Why? I mean, do you class yourself as a lucky man, then? Born lucky. Born Are lucky. You? Every time. Nothing I can do, and I always come up, and it's everything works out but all Torians right. Torians have to work for all their luck. I mean, Torians oh, will tell you. There like, you oh, go, well, son. You've got to think about it. You've well, got to think I'm about trying it. to. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit complicated at the moment. Hold back a little, Carrie. Fiona, more questions from you. Yes. I'd like to ask Vicky. You're a, you say you're a housewife. That's yeah. the hardest job in the world. Uh, are you economical? Are you practical? No, I attend a mad sprees of buying. You I know, do. but I'm pretty good at the housekeeping. You know, I save up until I can afford something. 
It's sort of, you only but I like to have a spree now and again. You only put you know? 24 birthday candles on your cake on your 30th birthday, that sort of thing. Oh, I like, I never admit <laughs> to being older than 28. <laughs> but what about history and, and, and Henry and his wives? I mean, you haven't picked There's, that one up. Mm, Russell? That's not Torian. Well, no, I didn't pick it up because I'm not interested. You're I mean, interested. she can go and have an affair with every king of Britain for all I care. <laughs> um, I want to get, I really actually want to get back to Stella. Now, oh, Torians, who said, as I said, to ruminate. I'm not suggesting oh. you're an old cow. Oh. But, um, <laughs> That's not cow. You know, well, you're not an old bully, you. I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> get in in there, to ruminate. Do you take your time making decisions? Are you fairly... And also around... Yeah. You're not. Yeah. You're a bit of a goer, aren't you, Stella? One night with me, yes. as I said, rest one night with me, I'll die happy in the morning. <laughs> Wonderful. Right. <laughs> I think we'd better leave it there. Thank you. We told you we'll bring you down to earth on the tourist show. <laughs> you have. Fiona, have you made up your mind? Yes, I'm going for Stella. You're going for Stella? Mm-hmm. Right. What about you, Henry? I'm going for Kerry, I think. Yes, he uh, played it all down, but I think um, he could be the tourist. Yes, you don't trust him with his answers, <laughs> no, do you? No, mm. And what about you, Russell? Well, I've got to go to Fastella. She may be Stella King, but to me, she's the queen of the Tory, and she looks like one. She's got a voice to match, and she's full of belly laughs. There's no doubt she's a Tory. And... So, oh, without any doubt. No, I'm mm. putting my thing Fiona on the Fiona and level, Russell go for line. Stella, and uh, Henry goes for Kerry. Now then, the real bull. <laughs> Please stand up. Oh, it takes one to no one. What about the others, Russell? Well, um, Kerry, I mean, I've worked with Kerry actually on other programmes and I still don't know his side and I still don't really care. So, um, <laughs> I'll go on. <laughs> no, Kerry, I don't know. You, you fooled me again. I don't know what you are. Vicky, I think, is a fire sign. Her hair is lovely and I think she should actually have come onto the Leo programme. Ah, yes. Oh, Vicky yes. is Leo. <laughs> Absolutely right. You're really on yes. form. Yes. Very good. <laughs> Put him out of his misery. Kerry, what are you? Russ Sagittarius. Oh, for two years you've never told me, you rotten swine. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't believe in it, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, in a couple of moments we shall be meeting Stephen Kenderlane with our Taurus audience. But what should he be looking for, Russell? What are the characteristic traits of uh, Taurus? People? Well, the main area for Taurus is actually the neck. Um, very often they look as though they've got no necks. Their head's just on top of their body. Um, <laughs> they also suffer from sore throats and can have problems with just a slight chill. It can turn into something quite difficult with laryngitis, what have you. Um, also, their bodies, they either have problems gaining weight or they end up very big indeed. And in fact, the main thing is their diet. Taurus has actually put the chocolate back into Britain because they can't walk past a cream crate shop, so really they're naughty, but nice. <laughs> <laughs> so they should all be fat with no teeth. Stephen, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about fat. Certainly we've got all our Taurians over here. I would say necklace Taurians.